There we go. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, they're in the shallow water today. Oh, that's a real nice one. Good morning, folks. Okay. A lot of you probably know the drill already, but uh, Deschutes River, we're Euro nymphing for steelhead and trout. It's like November 13th or something. I don't know off the top of my head. Um, yeah, getting a nice early start. It's pretty cold out here, but uh, I think oftentimes I start doing well right after it gets cold for the first time of the year. And uh, I'm not even sure it's under freezing right now, so. So it's not too cold, but uh, anyway, yeah, gonna get started. Hopefully we'll have some fish soon. So let's get going. Well, hooked our first trout on accident. Just, uh, just letting the flies dangle in the water while I walk. Oh, my rod's stuck in a tree. We take it though. Better start than I've had in a while. Oh, water's actually, just to the touch, feels warmer than I would have thought. Okay, I have been starting out in this run the last several times I've been up because this time of year, I've done quite well here for steelhead. But, I've gotten skunked here at least the last four or five, probably three or four times I've been out, so. So hopefully that bodes well. There we go. Little one. Hold still, you're gonna tangle me up. This is also, in my experience, morning water. There we go, quick view, back in the river. Another one that's not too big, but bigger than the last. Huh, I got some grass in my net. Yeah, these fish are in real shallow water right now. Be interesting to see, I'm planning to go work some stuff that's a little bit deeper after this. Sweet. I once hooked a bat in this spot. That was fucked up. Oh! It's gotta be a decent fish right there. At least it's a strong one. Yeah, best fish of the day so far. Nice. You know what? I was thinking about it. This is the fastest start I've had in a while. We're gonna count fish today. Just see what it looks like on a November day. Maybe we can have a pretty good one. So that's number four. If it really slows up and starts turning into a, into a slow day, maybe I'll, uh, you know, lose count, forget, so I don't feel bad about the number, but, um, Mid-November like this, I think a good day would be 20 to 30 fish. Anything more than that would be pretty exceptional. Uh, yeah, we'll see, that's four.
There we go. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, they're in the shallow water today. Oh, that's a real nice one. Oh my goodness. Ooh, baby. Yeah. <laughs> that one's a beast. Hooked him up above me like that. Oh, we're working the shallow water today. Okay guys, it's been a while since I pinned a fish this big on the Deschutes. 14, 15 or so. Sweet. Look, I'm barely holding her. She's fresh, it took me, I don't know, 15 seconds to land her. She's been in the net for like 30 seconds. But when you're that delicate with them, sometimes you get a little treat and they'll hang out with you for a while. That was cool. I don't know if you guys can see this bird right here. This is a kill deer flying away from us. Pretty cool birds. They um, <clears throat> lay their eggs right on the ground and they look like gravel. And then uh, if anything big comes along, they'll fly around a little bit, act like they got a hurt wing and lead a predator away from the nest or from their young. So you can watch them lead your dog on a merry goose chase down the riverside. And the other thing they do, they're a little metal because they'll uh, catch bugs and then they'll stick them on barbed wire or thorns and come back for them later. So nifty little birds. This right here is arguably one of the toughest wades that I do all year round. Obviously no big deal in the summer because you fall over, who gives a fuck? But in the winter with waders on, mostly it's just that I'll be cold. I'm not that worried about being able to stand back up or not. But you guys can see this big current right here is the only time I literally this wade is the only time I ever use a wade in a stack. Close one right there. a lot easier than it looks. Ugh. I wonder if you guys went underwater. Probably not. Okay. Yeah, I don't even know why I have a waiting staff. I think someone just gave it to me, but yeah, literally I never use it other than right there. It's just, you know, Waiting staff really slows you down a lot. They're in the way, in my opinion. Generally a waste of time, unless you're doing something pretty extreme. But you really don't want to fall over. And that does fit the bill for really would like to not fall over. There we go. White fish. I forgot to say after that big one, but that was number five and this is number six. Sweet. You know, I've caught some real nice trout right where I'm standing. This is a white fish spot. Probably counterintuitive to a lot of people because it looks fast, it looks like trout water, but you know what? I catch white fish and riffles a lot. Seven. There we 
we go. Probably a white fish. Yeah. My fingers are cold. Eight. So I'm using that waiting staff. Now, I don't know if anybody else has done this, but I guess the staff was not intuitive to me before when I was first using it because I would put it on my downstream side. Now, what it's good for, smack it in up above me, then I can lean on it hard, and I can get a much stronger, more aggressive angle leaning into the current. It really helps out in big water like this. I mean, like I said, this is the only spot I bought is to use it, but I don't use it in the summer. Whatever. Just fall over. I'm gonna fall over. But um, yeah, it is the tough spot. It's the right here. Okay, two, three. Okay. Uh, let's see. Well, I kind of rushed out there because there were some folks up above me, and I was like, they're gonna fish that spot. They got a boat, they don't realize that I'm trying to lock it down. So I rushed on up there and didn't fish this stuff. So now I'm gonna fish this stuff. Little guy. Okay, nine. Okay, folks, so on the Deschutes, we have a lot of king salmon. So I've been out here the last couple weeks chasing this, but uh, I'm chasing the, the egg bite because I have before found places where if it's on, the trout are absolutely annihilating anything any egg pattern, anything with a pink bead, and you can just crush. So if you know places below where the salmon hang out, sometimes you can do amazing. So I've been chasing that for a few weeks. I'm in a spot where that's plausible. It hasn't happened for me yet this season. Um, and it's hard to catch. It's like, I don't really know what the perfect conditions are, but it's like, clearly, it's not all the time. It's, it's a short window in which the eggs are actually available to the trout. Um, but yeah, fingers crossed, because if it's on, it's really on. So let's get after it. Oh, white fish. Nothing too exciting yet based off the, the egg bite, but at least there's a fish here. And that's number nine for the day. Nine or uh, ten, sorry, ten. Fairly hefty white fish. Eleven. Getting a lot of whitefish in the mix today. 
So the advice you always hear when you go to fish a big river like the Deschutes is to find the river within the river. So find features in it that you can actually read and work those, basically. This little area here is a great example. So, not that I've caught anything here, but um, out there, that's a big river out there. Water's fast. Even if I could get out there, I wouldn't know how to fish it. There is a spot out there kind of in the middle. I don't know, you probably can't see that on the GoPro. It's fast here, fast over there. It's a little slower in the middle there. So there's probably fish in there, but I couldn't really fish to them, you know? But here, up against the shore, you've got all these channels between this tree. You got a line of rocks right here. You got the near shore channel. You got each of these divots out through here. You got all these rocks to work through up here. It's basically like maybe a quarter of the water in the river has gotten shunted off to one side of this island up here and is working down through all these rocks and all this stuff. So I'm standing right now in the river within the river. Instead of having to deal with a big, uniform looking piece of water, I got all these slots and channels to play with, you know? All this stuff that you can read, it's much more legible than trying to pick fish out of um, relatively uniform looking water, even if they're down in it. Even if they are in that relatively uniform looking water, I mean. Man, just gave that nice little explanation of how this spot demonstrates the river within the river. Turn the camera off and I just, my heart was telling me not to turn it off, but my, the editing program that I use and just my Wi-Fi and shitty computer, I can't really upload big files, so I try not to make them too long. 13. So very next cast after I explained all that, hooked up. Right out where it is now on the outside edge of this rock, the inside edge of that current seam. And that's how you read the river within the river, folks. It's a happy one. White fish. Okay, I believe that this is 14, although definitely could be 15. Alright. Tangled up again. Hold on, buddy. I'll get you free. Ow, ow, ow. Good. 15. Freedom. Oh yeah. Little trout hit really hard though. 16. I'm gonna count that. I was holding this when he fell off, so. That's good enough for me. Well, camera was kind of getting funky there, but 17. This one pulled pretty hard.
18. I think we found some happy fish. Dead salmon over there. The salmon are really starting to die in numbers, so it's dead salmon everywhere. Another white fish and a good mix today. Not to bother with the net. Uh, 19. Okay, one more to hit that benchmark I set out at the start of the day. Even if we uh, didn't catch another still be a good day. I'm not going to quibble about, oh, I saw a big fish flash. I should have just set the hook. I didn't feel anything, but I should have just set the hook. There we go. Little guy, what do we got? Little white fish, free. Gonna go with the same thing. I caught the flies, counts as caught. So that's 20, that's 20, baby. On a roll right now, we found them. I think my first below the salmon spot wasn't hitting, but uh, which made me just assume it wouldn't be hitting anywhere. But I think we just might be on that egg bite. Oh, that was the blind set. I didn't know that fish was there. It's just the bottom of the drift. So set the hook. 21. We're seeing the cover water, cover water, cover water mantra pay off right here. I have walked a metric fuck ton today and most of the water has been sparse, but we are crushing through here right now just about finding them. The more water you cover, the more fish see your flies. The math is as simple as that. Nice. 22. You guys can probably tell from the light, we're starting to lose, lose the day pretty quick here. 22. Twenty-three in the net. There you go. Twenty four. Ooh. Probably a little one. I feel like when they hit that hard, more often than not, it's a little one. White fish.
So right here where I'm catching, ugh, got me tangled up. Right here where I'm catching all these fish, perfect spot to take advantage of the egg, the egg bite because you gotta be really careful with it because you don't want to walk on any of the salmon eggs. But I've scoped this spot out pretty good before. So in here, it's a bunch of fish holding water. And then out behind me, up there and out here, there have been a bunch of salmon for the last few weeks, really spawning it up. So this is what I was hoping for, is that I'd be able to find trout in here and whitefish. So far, so good. Ooh, baby. I think the one before this was 26 and this is 27. I guess I'll stick to my rounding down rule and say that this is 26. I'm pretty sure when I get home and look at the footage, I'm gonna be undercounted by at least one. Usually I don't even bother to put all the fish on camera, but. So what I was saying about avoiding stepping on salmon eggs, as far, that's just an ethics thing. As far as I know, there's no rule that says you can't walk where salmon are. Um, but you know, those fish are precious. You don't want to be crushing those eggs. So I want to be out there. I don't know if there's a way for me to get out there, but I, I bet I could finagle a way out there. And, uh, but it's just too much gravel out there. You know if you're walking on good sized rocks, so salmon are spawning in gravel. So you know if you're walking on good sized rocks, you're not gonna be stepping on eggs but it sure would be fun. I bet I could absolutely crush out there. All right, so I fished out all the water below those salmon that I felt uh, good fishing, like I wasn't gonna disturb them. And, uh, the light's getting long, so I think we're gonna call it a day. I think I've said 27 fish. I bet when I get home, it's gonna be another one to two more than that, but we'll find out in the video. Y'all will already know. Um, anyway, yeah, really solid, awesome day. I think I said at the outset, a 20 or 30 fish day for this time of year is a really good day, and it's been a great day. Um, especially with that nice big one at the beginning. So that makes me feel awesome. And uh, light's getting pretty long. It's been beautiful out here. It's been warm enough. I haven't had to deal with being cold at all today. So yeah, I'll probably be back out here again next week. I know I'm gonna be fishing again closer to home later this week. Uh, we'll see if that turns into a video or not. I'm not sure I'm actually gonna catch anything that day, but we're gonna give it a go. So uh, anyway, yeah, do me a favor, like and especially subscribe, and I will catch you guys in the next one.